This so far is my favorite and what I would consider the best Turkish air gun I have shot so far. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load and this is the Pretensis from Reximex. Do excuse me, I have got a bit of a cold so if I sound a little bit snotty, it's winter and I've just got man flu. So just get that out of the way. Look how good looking this thing is oh my god really really cool i am very impressed very impressed with this reximex i mean when they first come out they were a little bit i don't know the first one i had was the uh ixia it was a little bit rough around the 80s i ain't gonna lie uh people in in the comments of that video have said you know once you've put a good sort of thousand pellets through them, everything sort of smooth, smoothens out, blah, you know, and uh, it, they just need shooting. This thing straight out of the box, absolutely bang on. Right, let me throw out some specs. So this is a PCP air rifle, as you can see, it's obvious. This is 177. It has a laminated stock, which looks very cool indeed. This is the orange. You can get it in blue and there is a walnut one available also. It is a so side lever cocking, magazine fed PCP air rifle. It has a 14 shot magazine in 177 like this one or a 12 shot magazine in 22. Barrel length is 580 millimeters or 18.9 inches. Overall length is 1,050 millimetres or 33.4 inches, weighing in unscoped 2.8 kilograms. Fill pressure is 250 bar. The air tube volume is 260 cc. Trigger is adjustable. Manual safety catch. And that pretty much does it. Oh God, I'm losing my voice, guys. That pretty much does it for your specs. By the way, this is wearing a Hawk Frontier scope that I have got bolted on the top with the sports match mounts. And do you know what? I'm just gonna jump straight into accuracy because we've just sort of mentioned the scope. Check out this accuracy. Now this really impresses me for a rifle that is pretty, uh, in a real good price point, at a real good price point even. I think they're under 600 pounds here in the UK. Right then, check out these, well, this target then and these groups. So, I use five different flavors of pellets, okay? At 30 yards, me shooting off a bench, as you can see in the footage. First pellet that I used were the uh, JSB Hades, or Hades, however you say it, however you want to say it. Okay, 10.34 grains, three shot groups, finger there for uh, reference or scale, three shot groups. Oh yeah. Then I switched over to another pellet. I put a few on a gong first just to get the barrel accustomed to the new pellet. Next one I used was the heavy JSB Exact Beasts. Okay. Use them things. Let's have a look at them. I didn't show you the other ones. Look at them lumps. Even in 177. Use them. 16.20 uh, grain. They dropped a little bit lower. Obviously, the heavier. Still group well. That was a bit of a flyer there. Blame me for that one. Okay, next ones were the Air Arms Diablo Field, which are them right there. Okay. They were, yeah, they were all right. Okay, the odd flyer. Yeah, not, not amazing, but ish. Then I moved on to H&N Field Target Trophy, which I usually use these um, first. These are like my go-to, um, you know, zero in pellet, but I don't know why I just started on them, them Hades. These group really well, H&Ns, as expected. Excellent, excellent. Almost one whole groups there. 
And then I used the Norma Golden Trophy field target. These were 9.1 grains. Decent. Decent accuracy. This thing is accurate. Ignore all of them. They're like my zero in um, and messing about shots down there. That is accurate, guys. Really, really accurate. Right, first of all, magazines, cassette style magazines, 14 shot in, 177, 12 shot in, 2 2. You basically have to spin it around like that, get it under spring tension, drop one in, put your finger over the hole so it don't fall out, and then sort of just spin it around and fill it all up. Magazine's really good, never really had a problem with it at all. Right, let's take it from the top. So, look at that gorgeous, glossy, and I do like the glossy laminate stock. That's really nice, really nice. It has an adjustable cheek piece, which I didn't use, but it is adjustable. There is your recall pad butt stock, uh, butt pad. Okay, nice, chunky checkering on there. There is a sling swivel stud there. It is an ambidextrous stock, which I like because you know me, I am lefty. Another sling swivel stud there at the end of the fore end. And you've got like these grooves out of the fore end to sort of aid grip, really nice. There is a stud there to put on an attachment, bipod or whatever. And then you've got like these grooves here as well in the fore end, which makes, makes the shape of this uh, rifle really nice. I really, really like the stock. I really like it. Cross bolt safety, which I like. It's a bit weird having it right through the stock, but it is what it is. It's cool. It really is cool. Um, there is gauge there. And filler up. Here's your big tube here. So 260cc tube. You just pull the, uh, this is metal by the way. So you pull that dust cover off and there is your filler point there. Check out that for an air stripper. Isn't that cool? That would make a cool muzzle break on a firearm, that would. But that is a cool air stripper. Quite noisy, but oh, it is what it is, you know. I'd, I'd use this as a target gun. Picatinny rail on top. A uh, nice long barrel, like I mentioned. You can adjust, I don't think you can on the sub-12 ones. I didn't really mess about with it, I just left it at full power, but not sure whether you can actually adjust the power of it, but hey-ho. Side lever cocking. I found this rifle so smooth to operate, it just, it took, I don't know, it just blew me away the first couple of shots. So I was like, oh my God, this, this thing feels like, a HW100, uh, a Virac, to load. It is so smooth. Everything's solid. There's no up and down wiggle. Dead, dead impressed with it. Dead impressed with it. The accuracy speaks for itself. Really, really cool indeed. And this combination with this Hawk uh, Frontier, I don't know, it just worked really well. It really did work well. What a good looking rifle, guys. So let's give the trigger a pull. Just see what it is doing out of interest. Just needs to cock it. You'll probably hear how loud it is now. Right, let's give this thing a pull. It was a real nice trigger. Oof. Two pounds, 8.2 ounces. What I did notice as well, which is quite interesting, when you fire it, I think it does spin around the uh, the muzzle uh, air stripper. I don't know whether it'll, you'll be able to see it in there. No, it didn't do it then. Maybe I just blew something off uh, off my display in that side of the rat cave. Maybe not. I don't know. I've I thought I'd seen caught it in the footage as that sort of spins around, but you know the internal part of that. That break, um, I don't know. Weird, weird. <laughs> right, what else do you get? Well, in the box, obviously you get the box. There's the box. Cardboard box, uh, you get 
all the bits and pieces. You get two magazines, you get some toolage, um, you get a single shot tray as well, and you get an extra bit of Picatinny rail as well. And obviously all your filler stuff and some spare seals in the box there. You also get as well, which saves me a job, is um, a chronograph reading straight out the factory. So that is nice as well. So pause the video, see what that's doing. So it's running at full power. The um, manual, pretty good. You know, exploded diagrams, decent pictures, tells you everything you need to know. So decent manual as well. Very, very cool indeed, guys. You know, one thing that impresses me the most is accuracy and when it is a rifle that is not sort of 1500 pounds or two grand or whatever and you get real good accuracy for uh, at an affordable price that really impresses me and something with this spec that looks really cool decent trigger nice long barrel that's that's pretty quirky but i like it i do like it then yeah pretty impressive I didn't really find anything wrong with it. Um, don't know. No, I've probably that probably scares me. The laminated wood. I have that's a little bit thin on the trigger guard. I don't know, but I'm sure it'd be fine. I'm sure it'd be fine. You just you know, after our guns, don't we? You know, it's. Uh, I'm sure it'd be fine. But isn't that a good looking rifle, guys? Really, really good looking. Really good looking, straight out of the box. You know, dead impressive. Shot count and stuff, uh, I haven't got that. I'm still sort of searching for uh, the info on that, but I'll put it in the details of the video uh, down below. So, and all the techie specs uh, that you may have missed or I may have missed, I'll put down there, so check them out. But yes, I like it, guys. If you uh, want to spend your hard-earned cash and you don't want to spend you know, over a grand, uh, and you want a decent rifle that is really, really uh, accurate, then I suggest the Rexymex Pretennis. It gets a thumbs up from me. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching. That is Rack and Load. See ya.